I bow to all the seekers of truth. At the very outset, we have to understand that truth is what it is. We cannot organize it, order it, or conceptualize it. It has been, it is and it will be. <coughs> and we cannot know it through our human awareness, through our mental capacities, emotional projections, imaginary thinking. It has to be perceived and to be experienced on our central nervous system. As in our evolution we have grown, slowly developing into human state. Also we have to grow a little more to become the spirit state. <clears throat> when I am talking to you about this mechanism, which is a subtle mechanism within us, You have to have the attitude of a scientist who has an open mind and to accept whatever I am saying as a hypothesis. And then, if it is proved, as honest people you have to accept it because this is for our benevolence. Benevolence of our countrymen, emancipation of the whole humanity. Because within us is placed this subtle mechanism. This time is so special, I feel, because there are so many seekers of truth. Before this, people used to run after so many other things. <clears throat> First, for the security they had all kinds of clubs and all kinds of uh, arrangements made that you should feel secure from nature, from natural crisis, from animals. And then they developed other organizations just to feel their power and <clears throat> their money orientation. Now the time has come for us to see that all these things do not lead us to a very happy life. We have so many problems, so many tensions and so many diseases, endless, and very new type of incurable diseases that have come. I don't know how far Stephen has told you about the centers, but all these six centers that are pierced through, through this power which is within us, this is the power of pure desire. So far whatever desires we had are not pure. If they were, we would have felt satisfied about, about them. But as you know, economics says that the <coughs> Desires are not satiable in general. Wants are not satiable in general. Means you want something today, then you want something tomorrow, then you want something later on. If you get something, then you do not enjoy that for which you were hankering. Then you want to have something else. That shows this is not pure desire, but a desire uh, which leads you to another desire. So this is the power of pure desire <coughs> lying within you and she is your mother, your own mother, an individual mother reflected within you. 
we can say this is the Holy Ghost reflected in you. We have very mysterious ideas about Holy Ghost, it's not that mysterious. There's God Almighty as the Father, then we have Son, the God, and what about the Trinity is that the third one is the Holy Ghost. That has to be the primordial mother, has to be, logically. But somehow people avoided talking of women and they didn't want to show that the mother is such an important thing. Not in all the religions, like in Hinduism or say in Buddhism, every religion, they worshipped Mother as the creator of the whole universe and that God Almighty is just the witness. Also, you can see Christ, how He emphasized that when He was dying on the cross, said, Behold the Mother. So this primordial Mother is the Mother which is within us, reflected as the Kundalini. <clears throat> and when she rises, this Kundalini, when she rises and pierces through the fontanelle bone area, she gives you the actualization of baptism. You get connected with that subtle energy which is surrounding us, about which everybody has talked. Even in Quran it's called as Ru. Kundalini is called as Asas. In every scripture there's a description of a Kundalini of some way or other, or of this mechanism as in the Bible is that there is a tree of life within us. Even in Gita is described as tree of life. So every religion has described this mechanism, plus it has always said that you must seek yourself, that you should have your second birth. But people just certify themselves as we are something born again, you can call it we are uh, uh, Brahmins or they can call themselves that we are realized souls. But by false certificate you do not become. It's a question of becoming. You have to become. It's not just uh, giving a false certificate about it, that we are something and they are something. It is so obvious and evident, you can see, that anybody follows any religion whatsoever is capable of committing any sin. There's no bondage of the religion that they follow. That means it's all outside, <coughs> it's not innate within us and the religion has to be innate and I call it as the valency of human beings, that human beings have ten valencies and when this Kundalini rises, she enlightens those ten valencies in this area that you see, the green area, void, it's, it enlightens all that and that's how you just become a righteous person, you become righteous, you become virtuous and you are proud of it, but you do not try to aggress others with it. You enjoy them because you are so compassionate that you want to be sharing it with others and enjoying it with others. A new personality is evolved out of us. I always say like a pond, sometimes we feel that our lives have become so much full of miseries and troubles, as in a pond we see lots of creatures creeping around. But when the lotus blooms out, it fills the whole pond and transforms it with the fragrance that it has. In the same way it happens to us. Such a transformation, first of all is the simple one where physical being improves automatically, not by any medicine, <coughs> not by anything else but your own power. It's your own power that cures you. You don't have to take any medicines for it, you don't have to pay for it because it's a living process, I told you. So you don't have to go to any doctor, you just know the diagnosis yourself and you get cured yourself. You can cure yourself, you can cure others because you are realized and you can give realizations to others so they get cured too. Then the mental problems like schizophrenia and all these things just disappear. 
If there is tension, it is, he must have told you about the ego and superego, because they cover your head. But when it opens out, all your worries, all your tensions pass out and you become a person who can be called as a person of thoughtless awareness. Means you watch something, you don't think about it, you just see it, just seeing the witnessing part. And that is the greatest thing that happens because if you want, you can think, but if you don't want, you don't have to think, you just have to watch. Now you see a beautiful carpet lying here. <coughs> supposing I had possessed this carpet or supposing I was of a normal type, I would have been worried more that is it insured or not and maybe spoiled or something like that. And if it had belonged to somebody else, I would have been thinking, oh, how will I purchase this, where can I get it and all kinds of thoughts. But the beauty of this carpet, I'm not enjoying. But once I have developed this witness state, I look at it. And I look at it and I, what I see is the beauty because it acts on me. The beauty, the creation, uh, the joy of that creation, everything acts and I suit down with that beauty completely as if there are rivers flowing on my head of complete joy. And this is what we have to enjoy in this new personality. Then one has to know that we are peace because spirit is the source of peace. Once you become the spirit, the spirit comes into your attention and you become a very peaceful person. It's like you are on the periphery, <coughs> like on the wheel. If you are on the periphery, you are moving all the time. But the center of the wheel is absolutely peaceful. So as if you jump onto your center, from there you see all the movement of the wheel, but you are in the center and you are not disturbed. You can see the problems very easy to be handled. We can give anal another analogy that supposing you are stand standing in the waves, then you, you are afraid of the waves that you might be drowned. But supposing you get onto a boat, then you start seeing these waves. But supposing you know how to swim, then you can jump in and save people who are getting drowned. In the same way, we are lost in the waves of our thoughts. But once we become the witness, we see our problems much more clearly. And that's how we know also the solutions and things work out. Above all, you become the joy. You become the joy, a pure joy, not the joy outwardly, which has to be thought and is to be, see you, some see paintings, they say, oh, you must see this, is this, this, nothing of the kind. Nobody need tell you what is this painting is about. You just see the painting and you see it and you get all the joy out of that within you. So you become a source of joy for everyone else. But the greatest thing that happens that you get connected to this all-pervading power, this power that organizes everything, that does all living work, that thinks for us, is very gentle and also can destroy whichever is against uh, construction. It can destroy all evil things and it loves you. So you get connected to that energy, that vital energy, it starts flowing through you. So you do not feel tired, you are dynamic, uh, you are compassionate, at the same time at peace with yourself. That is the wonderful thing that we are. We are made that way. Only we have to know ourselves like this instrument has to go to the mains. In the same way, we have to be connected to the mains and that's how we know what glorious things we are. Today is the only day I'm here, I'm sorry I couldn't spare more time, but I hope to come back again <coughs> sometime, maybe in May, because I didn't know there was such a response here and such nice people living in this place who are so responsive to truth. So I'm here with you and for a short time and in this short lecture 
I cannot tell you all about it, it's an ocean of knowledge. But we have lots of tapes which you can hear and understand Sahaja Yoga. But in any case, I would like you to ask me questions before we go in for this process of Self-realization. That will take about ten minutes only. <coughs> the question should be relevant because I have come here to give you your own beauty. I have not come here to ask for votes or anything like that. So it should be relevant with the subject uh, and should be helpful to you as well as to me to know what are the problems are. Kundalini awakening never damages you. But as far as the bad management is concerned, a person who has no authority to raise Kundalini tries to do some nonsensical things, naturally there is a damage because they have no authority, divine authority, and they are doing the job. But so far we ha there are so many Sahaja Yogis all over the world <clears throat> and also the Sahaja Yogis have given realizations to people, it doesn't do damage, it's your mother. And when you were born, she took up all the labor upon herself, she took up all the pains upon herself and saw that you were not hurt. In the same way this mother, she knows everything about you, she's the loving mother, the most loving mother and she is not going to bother you at all. Some people do write like that, that uh, Kundalini awakening is very difficult, it will do you damage and all that. It is only just, just to see that people don't get their realization, it's just to frighten. Or maybe it's a money-oriented nonsense, must be that they must be wanting to frighten you, that you are sinful, you are useless, you better give us money, so that maybe your Kundalini might rise or something. I've seen some people who cannot get realization or anything, they come and tell me, Mother, I must be a very sinful person. I said, who told you that? Certain guru has told me. I said, you go and tell him back that you are the most sinful person ever born. So all these ideas ha are coming up on people who are very simple-hearted and gullible because they believe all this nonsense and uh, they just succumb to it. But it's not so. I told you, you are glorious and beautiful. Please believe me in that. Integrity. You see, integrity is not one particular chakra, but it's the experience. What happens? You get the experience of realization, so that you start feeling the cool breeze, the vibrations of the Holy Ghost, you can say, or of the Ru surrounding you, and you start enjoying it. Just enjoy it. And you don't want to give it up. You don't want to give it up because you enjoy it. That's how the integrity develops. There is a, no stamping like that, that you have to be integrated or you have to be into, uh, into the integrity, it's not there. But the integration does take place because all these chakras get uh, sort of uh, the Kundalini inside them which, like a thread, passes through all these beautiful pearls. So that's integration is there. But integrity part comes through your own depth, first of all. If you touch your depth, you just never leave Sahaja Yoga. Some people do leave Sahaja Yoga because of very superficial reasons sometimes, but again they want to come back. <laughs> so the trouble is, 
uh, they leave it and then again come back, because it's such a source of joy. Uh, they are allowed to leave and they, sometimes we have to ask some people to leave because uh, they, they can be very destructive people, some are very destructive people who come to Sahaja Yoga, but all of them then get cleared out and come back again. So it grows. There's no force uh, of anything. Like uh, somebody told me that, uh, she, she said that, I'll take fifty dollars for a course in Sajo. I said, why did you say so? She said, you see, people relate to it better and uh, they all came for the program. And I gave the course and afterwards I returned all the money because you can't take money. I played the tape where I said you can't pay for doing things, so I returned the money. But that fifty dollars, according to her, uh, pinpointed them to this. I don't think so. It's necessary, but she, she made an experiment like that, that how people stick on because they have paid for. Like we go to a f see a film and the film is horrid, but because we have paid for, we sit till we have finished with the nonsense. <laughs> That's the nature. But I don't think in Sahaja Yoga we have ever done that, but she said she experimented and it worked with people. But I have greater hopes. Sahaja Yoga is the complete integration of all the yogas. When the Kundalini rises, then it has to be held up at every center. See, like it passes through the first, uh, second center, then the third center, so the second center has to go into augmentation, to the constriction, so the Kundalini doesn't fall. Then it rises to the third, fourth center, then the third center goes into augmentation. But it's very quick, it's very quick. It happens as if uh, when you start your car, ignite, then all the machinery starts working automatically in the same way it works. But modern Raj Yoga is something very different. Uh, what they do is to s stop the chakras without starting the Kundalini. They, even up to the point that the Kundalini even passes through this center of Vishuddhi, then your tongue is little bit put in, pulled inside for stopping it from falling down. But you don't feel it at all. In, you'll see that you'll not feel anything of the kind because it goes like a jet in people. You just don't feel all this. So because they must have read about it, they cut their tongues, the thread, and push back their tongues. And I was amazed that in Los Angeles there are some doctors from India whose tongues are wagging like dogs, they can't speak. And this is what is absolutely wrong, that when the car has not yet started, what's the use of moving the wheels? You spoil the car. It's artificial. Yoga cannot be artificial. It has to be a living process. It has to be spontaneous. Yoga means the union with the Divine. And I have seen people who have been to Raj Yoga have suffered a lot. This is not Raj Yoga. Even Hatha Yoga is not there. Ha and Tha is two Nadis. Is the right side Nadi is the one which we call as the Surya Nadi, meaning the Sun Nadi is Ha, and Tha is the left side Nadi, which is the uh, channel of uh, pure. We can say is channel of desire, and is a power of desire. So these both things are to be worked out simultaneously, so that you achieve the yoga. Now Patanjali wrote about it long time back. And the Patanjali Yoga just has ashtangas, means there are eight parts to it, it's such a big book, and eight parts to it, out of which a very wee, wee part of it is called Yama Niyama. Out of that a very wee part is the exercises. And that too is to be applied only in case when the Kundalini starts, you know where it stops. And if there is any physical problem, then only you are supposed to do. But these days I find the way people doing our Hatha Yoga is something like taking all the medicines from the medicine box, like a mat. And they develop horrible problems because it's only the right side one 
and uh, the, some of the Hatha yogis are so hot-tempered that if you have to approach them, one has to take a barge pole. <laughs> we had one fellow called Mr. Brahmachari in India who was a very well-known Hatha yogi and he ended up in uh, creating a big factory of arms and ammunition. I think it was too much for him inside the arms and ammunition, so he thought he better produce more of that. So it is something that is very one-sided and can create people who are very dry. Such people can go in for a very bad married lives, they might end up with very hot temper, bad livers, asthma, liver, and also the very bad massive attacks of the heart could be there because it's only one side. You have to be in balance. Can you hear? You don't necessarily focus on that chakra, you must focus on the whole. Uh, no, no question of focusing. You see what happens that the uh, Kundalini rises and a person who is giving you realization can see clearly. You can even sometimes see this triangular bone pulsating like a heart and you can see the Kundalini rising and you can see the movement of that energy. If it stops at a point, also you can feel it on your fingertips because of collective consciousness. Then what you have to do is to just to correct that cent center at that moment, then it rises. of the chakras are basically the colors of the spectrum. Yes. They're not in the, in the order. Oh, that's, that's the color why you have. This one, why is this one? Well, that one actually is gold, isn't it? It's gold, you see. It is a golden gold color. Karma Yoga. Now, karma yoga is a thing that is said that whatever, this is a Sri Krishna's preachings that whatever karmas you do, <coughs> you have to do the karma, you have to do. But he is, he was a divine diplomat and he knew that human beings are not straightforward, so he had to go round the way. But between the lines we must learn. That first thing he said, whatever karmas you do, I mean, he was, a, he was not a, a modern shopkeeper, so first he talked about jnana yoga, meaning to know, is knowledge, know. Know what comes from the Sanskrit word nya, gna, as we call it, and you know the early Christians were called as gnostics, gnostics, meaning who knew it on their central nervous system, and from the same comes the word vida, from where the Veda is made, or Buddha means the Bodha, is uh, in the uh, Buddhist style, they call it Bodha, from where the word Buddha comes in. Buddha means the one who is enlightened. <coughs> so you have to be enlightened on your central nervous system. That is the thing is, so he said, first you seek the jnana, but then he talked about the karma to Arjuna, he said that you must do your karmas, but the condition was that whatever karmas you do, whatever work you do, you leave it at the feet of the Lord. That's impossible because if you are doing something, you always feel, I am doing it. Even if you say, no, I leave it at the feet of Lord, it's not so. Only after realization it happens. After realization, you don't say that I am doing it, it just works out this way. Oh, it's working, it's going, they talk in third line third person, as if something else is doing it, we are just as uh, mediums or some sort of a uh, instrument in between and it's working, 
it's not doing, it's not happening. So, after realization, the karma becomes a karma, means non action. That you don't think you are doing anything, it just works. And that's why this Kriya Yoga is up against Sahaja Yoga. Sahaja Yoga is a Kriya where there is no action, just you think it's happening, it's there. You see it, you just you are a witness of the whole thing. So, here what happens that when the Kundalini rises, she, when she goes to the Agya Chakra, which represents, as you say, the third eye, whatever you may call it, it is between the optic chasma and it looks after the pituitary and the pineal body. And as a result, we have developed two institutions called ego and superego. The ego is the one which tells us, I have done it, I am doing this. Both these institutions are sucked in by the enlightenment of the center. And that's how the thing opens out. And all your karmas are sucked in. So there's no problem of karmas. Only human beings thinks, think that they are doing karmas, animals don't. They have no sense of sin or anything. They are completely under the bondage of God. So in Sanskrit they are called as Pashu, means under the bondage. But we are the ones, we have got freedom. That's why we think that we have done this and we have done that. We should not do this, we should not do that. But when the Kundalini rises and she awakens the center, then both these things are sucked in. And when they are sucked in, then you do not do any karmas anymore, you just are in a karma. You do everything. I mean, I, I travel, you know, such a lot and I have a family and everything is there. But it's just I'm happening, I'm just seeing it, I'm not doing anything as such. So when you are also awakened, there's uh, no obligation, it's just happening. It is so. It's uh, here where we should understand that this center uh, is bestowed upon by the great life of Christ. Christ is there and they said that He died for our sins, died for our karmas, is a fact. Because when He is awakened, these two institutions are pulled in, inside and you get your Kundalini out there, it opens out and this bone which has been calcified opens out and the Kundalini pierces through. And this is what it is that He died for our sins. But still the theory is uh, extended that we must suffer. Why should we suffer? He has suffered for us already and is already written by Thomas who was travelling to India via uh, Egypt where he wrote the treatise and uh, he said uh, that uh, why should we suffer? Christ has already suffered for us and he's talked everything about Sahaja Yoga. He said it is an experience of Self-realization and everything. And that book now is out in England. After 48 year, years they could uh, decode the whole thing which was found about 48 years back in Egypt and is out now and is beautiful Gnostics is the name of the book. Uh, but uh, is not so much appreciated by some of the people because it challenges the theories uh, of sufferings and confessions and all this nonsense. Me or you? You, you cannot awaken yourself. Uh, you see, you have to have one enlightened candle to enlighten another candle. This candle, which is not enlightened, cannot enlighten itself. But there's no obligation. But you can correct. Once it is awakened, you can correct it, you can develop it. First, only few hair like strands of this energy come up and open the fontanelle bone area and then this flow of rue starts flowing on you and it relaxes more of the centers, so more of these strands start coming up. 
So you can develop it at your will by understanding it, but you cannot enlighten yourself by yourself. Because it's not Sahaja meditation. All other meditations are artificial. You, be, you are in meditation when you are in such. Unless and until Kundalini is awakened and you are one with the Divine Power, still thinking all the time, how can you stop thinking? There is one thought that rises and another thought that falls off. Again another thought comes up and it falls off. It goes on like this and we are ja dancing on the cusp of these thoughts. In between the thought there is a little space called as Vilamba, is the present. Either we are in the past or in the future. But that is only possible when the Kundalini comes up, then these thoughts become more lean and there is a bigger space left and you remain in thoughtless awareness. And that is how it works out. That's in the meditative mood you are all the time. You don't have to meditate because you are in thoughtless awareness. As soon as you see something extremely beautiful, extremely joy-giving or a personality who is a realized soul or anything that's so righteous and good, immediately become thoughtless, immediately. It happens. You don't have to do it. You don't have to be in meditation, you just become. I have seen these days there are many children who are born, who are realized souls, and just I have seen them sitting before me, just, just sitting, not moving, nothing, just in meditation. Your pupils dilate and you start feeling the cool breeze in your hand. Even if you meet someone, it happens. Uh, if he's a realized soul. It's very interesting that there was a poet in India who was himself a uh, tailor and he went to see somebody who was a potter. They both were realized souls. And the potter was busy with his clay, you see, uh, trampling it with his feet. When he saw this, tailor saw this potter, he looked at him went into thoughtless awareness and he said that, the poetry is so beautiful, he says, I came to see the nirguna, meaning the formless, that is the vibrations, I came to see that, but that is in person here. Such appreciation is not possible unless and until you are a realized soul. We always see the defects of a person, but such a deep appreciation of another personality is only possible when you are a realized soul and then you are amazed how you are surrounded by such beautiful people. Now we had this time at least 3,000 people for a seminar in India. No quarrels, no fights, all the time I hear what bouts of laughter, joking, leg pulling, all nice friendship going on, no problems of any kind, satisfied with everything, so beautiful to see like I went to Russia and the Germans came to give Realization to Russians, you know, that was too much. It was too much, I mean, I just felt so happy about it, so happy the tears started rolling my eyes when I saw the Germans just embracing all of them with such joy and purity. It was wonderful. In Sahaja Yoga, Germans have become so gentle, the most gentle people, are the Germans, extremely gentle. Can you believe that?
Exactly. Question. Depends on. It has transformed so many people instantly, so many. Majority people get transformed immediately. Some people do take time, I must say. But transformation, the degree of transformation may vary from time to time. For example, in a place like London, where there are all hard nuts, I must tell you. <laughs> we were nice people, you see, very scholarly, and coming from Cambridge and from Oxford and this and that. Very skeptical. Doesn't matter. These people had taken to drugs. Imagine, very well educated. Some professors, some doctors had taken to drugs and had were alcoholics. Absolutely they were lost people, I would say. And when they got their realization, overnight they gave up. Drinking alcoholism. I was amazed at their own depths, the way they touched their own depth, just gave up. It's very surprising. So you cannot say the degree, but one should never have diffidence about it. It all works out, the transformation works out. And in collectivity it works out much better. If you get out of the collectivity, it is like a nail which is cut out of the hand, you see, we, because we are all part and parcel of the whole, of one being, and uh, you are awakened. But if you get out of that body, then again there is a problem. So it takes time for such people, and also for people who are sick, maybe more time, maybe some people who are mentally averse, some people are, as I said, hard nuts, can break very fast. You can't say, <laughs> I've had all kinds of experiences. And I always say that Sahaja Yoga is a big joke, I tell you, because you see people just, you see them so aggressive, uh, so funny, like one fellow came all drunk to the program and he was so aggressive with me and he was about to hit me. Then they took him out. I said, all right, come and see me tomorrow. He, then uh, they put the address in his pocket. Next day he was there, and today he's a very good engineer, electrical engineer he is. It's very good. Yes, she will. Uh, <laughs> is it, can you explain the process you use to, array, to rise the Kundalini? All right, power? that I'm going to do. That's a very good question. Is that I will do. Could you give some advice on how to be non judgmental? Uh, of the? To be not to judge others. Yes, people start judging others because they don't know themselves. <laughs> Once you know yourself, start judging yourself first of all. This is the last judgment where you judge yourself. It's written in the Quran that your hands will speak and they will give witness against you. And you get frightened about yourself, oh God, I've got this. And uh, like the other day somebody came, Mother, please, please solve my problem. I said, what has happened? My agya is horrible, means I am very egoistical. So the attention goes to yourself and you start correcting yourself and you look at the good points of others. And if somebody says to you that such a chakra is catching, you thank that person, you are happy because his interest is benevolence. He is not trying to judge you, but his benevolence, if he finds it. But normally you find yourself about yourself, there is no need to talk about it. Just find out yourself. Mother, is it possible that once you become realized that you can fall back if you become unenlightened, so to say? Yes, it is sometimes, you know, because 
At the time of the growth, this is the parable of Christ, you see, that he said that some seeds fell on the marshy ground, they sprouted but did not grow. So it's possible because it depends on the superficial temperament of a person, maybe possible, but so far I've seen many people who went out of the Sahaja Yoga, again are back, again back very much the other day, uh, we saw them in Melbourne, so many are back again and they were very sorry that they went out, they want to come back because so much of enjoyment. You see, when you have tested the nectar, the ambrose, then you don't want to test something else. But if you try again because of your habits or something, again you want to come back because you remember that experience. The Sahaja Yoga moves like that. Many people come in first, then few people come for follow-on, um, then again some people come in, then some more come in like that, it goes on filling the cup. But follow-on people will be less, depends on the depth of a person, how much he has touched it or he much, how much he has understood his own value of your, his realization. They'll all come, but some people won't. But then they start coming back and how it grows that way. Now we, I don't know, if you ask me, I don't know how many there are in this whole world, Sahaja Yogis. I can only make them out whenever I see them, they are Sahaja Yogis, that's all. We also have one method, we take the photograph of a person and after realization and put the name and the time of realization, the date of birth and put it on these plastic uh, albums and I see them, all of them and that's how I know. It's a beautiful rapport and love and friendship, understanding and protection. No one wants to leave it normally, but if they want, they're free. There's no force, you cannot force it, that's the main point. Even if you don't want Sahaja Yoga, I cannot force it. If you don't want pure knowledge, I cannot force it. If you don't want Self-realization, I cannot force it. It cannot be forced. It's not conversion, it is transformation. Now should we have? All right. Again I repeat that it cannot be forced. So those who do not want to have it, have it, to leave the hall please, uh, uh, that would be very kind of them. It takes only ten minutes, there's no danger, nothing of the kind and most of you will feel it, I'm sure, uh, the all-pervading power. <clears throat> now first thing you feel is the cool breeze out of your fontanel bone area and then also you feel the cool breeze on your fingertips. Sometimes you might feel heat uh, if you have a liver problem or something or if you have not forgiven people. But there are two conditions for surgery. One of them is that you have to forget the past. You have to forgive yourself completely and not to feel guilty at all. No guilt because with the guilt you catch on this center and which is very dangerous also. I'll tell about it later when we go on with it. But please do not feel guilty. At this moment in the present you are all great people who are here to get your realization, you are seekers of truths and forget about anything that makes you feel guilty. That's one condition. That means you should be pleasantly placed towards yourself. As we say in Sanskrit, prasanna chit, because you are going to enter into the kingdom of God and you should be very happy to do that. Now, the second condition is that you have to forgive everyone. Some people say it's very difficult to forgive, but if you forgive or don't forgive, it's a myth. What do you do? Nothing. But if you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands. So at this moment, just say, just in general, not to remember all of them who have troubled you or have made you miserable or made you unhappy. Just say, I forgive every one of them, that's all. These two conditions you have to follow. 
which is very simple, is just to say in your heart that I am not guilty at all and that I forgive everyone. So now we work it out. Now, <clears throat> we may have to take out our shoes because the shoes are uh, not an obstruction but better to take some help from the Mother Earth is important. And trust yourself, believe in yourself, have self-confidence. Don't think that you can't get it, all of you can get it, you are quite capable. Now, I'll show you first how to nourish your own centers and to raise your Kundalini. First, uh, you keep your eyes open and see for yourself and later on we have to close our eyes to go into the process, very simple. So first of all, the left hand is towards me, representing the desire to get Self-realization, just like this, ordinary uh, way of sitting, not too much of bending or too much of straight, just ordinary way we sit comfortably and put both the feet apart from each other because these are two powers. So just to keep them on the ground, apart from each other, and the left hand towards me. Now the right hand is the one which does the action to nourish your centers. So first we put our right hand on our heart while we keep the left hand all the time steady like that. Now in the heart resides the Spirit. In the heart resides the Spirit and the first thing is to recognize that it resides in our heart. We have to open our heart for that. Then we take down our hand to the upper portion of our abdomen which is the center of your mastery. So many great masters, as we call them Sadhgurus, have created this special center for us. By enlightening it, you become the master and you can give realizations to others. Because if you are the Spirit, the light of Spirit guides you. So you become your own guru, you become your own master. Then is the center which is in the lower portion of your abdomen on the left hand side. We work only on the left hand side. This is the very important center which manifests on your central nervous system the pure knowledge by which you can feel the all-pervading power and you can know all the laws that are divine. Then you take back your hand on the upper portion of your abdomen again on the left hand side and press it hard. And then you take your right hand again on your heart. Then in the shoulder, in the corner of your shoulder and your neck, like this, from this side. And turn your head to your right fully so that you can push back your. Now, this is the center mostly catching, it's the center where you feel guilty. It's a very dangerous one because when it catches, you get spondylitis, you get so many other troubles like angina and the whole system becomes very lethargic. So please put this right hand across and press it hard onto the spinal cord on the left hand side. Now, take your right hand on your forehead across like this and put down your head. Put down your head and press it on both the sides, your forehead, as we do it when we have headaches, just like this. This is the center for forgiving others. Now you take back your right hand, the back side of your head, and push back your head slowly on it as far as you can take it, balancing on the hand like that. Now here you have to ask for forgiveness from the Divine if 
knowingly or unknowingly you have done some mistakes, but without feeling guilty, without counting the mistakes, without thinking about them, for your satisfaction only. Now you have to stretch your hand, right hand fully, stretch your palm, at the center of your palm you have to put it on top of your fontanelle bone area here and press back your fingers, press them back, stretch them back so that there's a nice pressure on your fontanelle bone area and here you have to move your scalp very slowly, clockwise, seven times, the scalp, not the hand, the scalp has to move. This is very important, so stretch back your fingers, stretch them back so the pressure is all right. And now, Mm. That's all we have to do, not much. Now, we can close our eyes, both the feet apart from each other, left hand like this, and the right hand is to be used for nourishing our centers on the left hand side. Please close your eyes and don't open them till I tell you. You can take out your spectacles also. There's no need to have spectacles when you have closed your eyes and uh, also sometimes it helps your eyesight. So now please close your eyes. Put your right hand on your heart, left hand towards me. Here you have to ask a very important question three times to me in your heart as you ask a computer. You have to ask a question. You can call me Shri Mataji or you can call me Mother. Mother, am I the Spirit? Mother, am I the Spirit? Ask this question three times. Please keep your eyes shut. Now, if you are the Spirit, you are your guide, you are your Guru. So now, please take down this right hand on the upper portion of your abdomen, on the left hand side, and here you ask me another question in your heart with full confidence. Mother, am I my own master? Mother, am I my own a master? Ask this question three times. Now, take down your right hand in the lower portion of your abdomen. Here is the center of pure knowledge. And as I told you, it cannot be forced on you. I respect your freedom. So here you have to say six times in your heart because this center has got six petals. You have to say, Mother, please give me pure knowledge. I cannot force it on you, six times. As soon as you start saying this, the Kundalini starts rising. And now we have to nourish our centers, upper centers, with our self-confidence. So now raise your right hand onto the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side. And here you have to say 
with full confidence in yourself to open this center. Mother, I am my own master. Say it ten times, please. Mother, I am my own master. Say it with full confidence. Now the greatest truth about you is that you are not this body, you are not this mind, you are not these emotions, nor you are this ego or these thoughts, but you are pure spirit. This is the greatest truth. So now, raise your right hand to your heart and say with full confidence, with full confidence you have to say, Mother, I am the Spirit. Say it twelve times, please. Mother, I am the Spirit, twelve times, with full confidence. Now, I have already told you that you need not have guilt. The all-pervading power is the ocean of love and bliss. It is the ocean of knowledge and joy. But above all, it is the ocean of forgiveness. So you cannot commit any mistakes that cannot be dissolved by the power of this great ocean of forgiveness. So now raise your right hand in the corner of your neck and your shoulder and place it behind as much as possible from the front side, not from the back side, but from the front side. And turn your head towards the right. Here you have to say, Again, with full confidence, sixteen times, because there are sixteen petals to this. Mother, I am not guilty at all. As I have told you, that we have to forgive everyone. And many people think that it's difficult to forgive. Whether you forgive or don't forgive, you don't do anything, but we are not to play into wrong hands by not for forgiving, which is a myth, absolute myth. So now raise your right hand and put it on your forehead across, bend your head fully and press it hard and hear from your heart Say, Mother, I forgive everyone. You don't have to think how many people you have to forgive, whom you have to forgive, for what you have to forgive, but just say, Mother, I forgive everyone from your heart, not how many times. It has to come from your heart. This is very important. If you don't forgive, the Kundalini won't just pass through. This is the very important center of Agya which is a very constricted one normally. So please say it from your heart, Mother, I forgive everyone. Don't say, I can't. Please don't say that. Now, take your hand on the back side of your head, and push back your head on it, as far as you could take it. Let it rest on your hand. Here you have to ask for forgiveness from Divine, but you are not to think of the mistakes you have committed or whatever wrongs you have done or to count them or to think of the people, but just in general for your own satisfaction you have to say, 
without feeling guilty from your heart, not how many times. O oh Divine, please forgive me if I have done knowingly or unknowingly anything wrong. Now, stretch your hand, stretch your palm. Now put your hand or your palm, the center of your palm, on top of the fontanel bone area. And now stretch your fingers backwards. This is very important. Stretch them as much as you can so that there's a nice pressure on your fontanel bone area and you have to move it, the scalp, seven times clockwise, very, very slowly. But here again I cannot cross over your freedom. You have to ask for Self-realization. So please say seven times, Mother, please give me Self-realization. Please ask for it seven times when you are moving your hand slowly seven times. Now please take down your head and open your eyes. You can put on your glasses if you want. Now put your right hand towards me now like this, little lifted up and bend your head and see for yourself with the left hand on top of the fontanel bone. See for yourself, bending your head, to see for yourself if there's a cool breeze coming out of your fontanel bone area. You can lift the hand a little higher, sometimes it can be much higher, but don't touch your, your head, it should be above at least three to four inches minimum to begin with and then you'll feel the cool breeze. Just move your hand, bend your head is the best way. Now put the left hand towards me like this, and now bend your head and see with your right hand if there's a cool breeze coming out of your fontanel bone area. There could be hot air also coming, doesn't matter. Don't doubt it. <coughs> Don't think it's air conditioning after all. <laughs> uh, it cannot be coming out of your head, isn't it? Now again put the right hand towards me. Keep your ha head bent and also now see for yourself if you can feel the cool breeze coming out of your head with the left hand. Now, you can lift your both the hands towards this roof like this and bend back your head. And here you have to ask a question three times. Mother, is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Mother, is this the Ruh? Mother, is this the Paramachaitanya? Mother, is this the all-pervading power of God's love? Ask any one of these questions three times. Now put down your hands. And just watch me without thinking, you can do it. Now those who have felt the cool breeze, 
out of their fontanel board or on their fingers, fingertips, even hot air is all right. Please raise both your hands. Oh, most of you. May God bless you. You are all saints now. I bow to all of you. May God bless you. So nice to see. Some of you did not feel it, doesn't matter. Don't get disappointed. We have a very nice center, and some of you who have not felt can come round, and some of the surgeries can work it out for you. Maybe there's some sort of an obstruction somewhere. So don't feel nervous about it. It will all work out. No, no problem. So may God bless you. If you want, you can come and shake hands with me because I'll be going away tomorrow. I could move forward a little bit. I want to meet them.